up, guys? Welcome back to WCS America Challenger League. Axel Toss here with Axlap. Currently watching the fourth match of the night. Drunken Boy versus Ian. Drunken Boy actually taking game one there. Very, very nice play there with, with uh, you know, a, a lot of aggression, which is his yeah. trademark. That early two base timing, and then he even came back again with Medivacs. And the Medivac count just got so huge. I mean, with, with the, the upgrade advantage and the Medivac count, Nothing really died. I mean, yeah, I think he had like nine medevacs at the end there. Something, it was something ridiculous. Which I is mean. fantastic when you have 2-2 two, two bio underneath it and your opponent's only on 1-1 one, one still. And, and it, it, you're using almost all speed leans, right? Uh, they just can't get enough service area. Every every bio unit that's in the front getting clawed away is being healed just as fast as they're being clawed at. So, uh, I mean, just, yeah, literally, literally, literally nothing died in these last two engagements. You have to get like ridiculous bailing hits. And of course, a lot of that was, uh, it was made possible by not only the first attack there from Drunken Boy sniping the Evo Chamber, but then holding off that follow-up all in a little bit later on with all the Banelings in the natural. Drunken Boy playing a nicely crafted game one. Can he continue here in game number two and advance to the last match of the night? In the top left-hand location, I present to you your Red Zerg player. Hailing from Taiwan and representing Team Yo Iron Man, currently down 0-1. He's on the verge of being eliminated from WCS America. He must win two in a row here. He is. Ian. And his opponent in the bottom right hand side of Akalon Wastes. Your blue Terran player showing a very hyper aggressive style in game one. Can he continue his success and go on to face Jadon in the final match of the evening of the evening? He is Drunken Boy. That's the big question. Drunken Boy make the 2-0 -oh happen? I think he can. He played really well, Husky. He did. He played really well. And so far, Ian showed a little bit of a weakness uh, against Terran opponents. You know, he did get 2-0 -oh by both Major and Xenocider mm -hmm. uh, earlier. So uh, I think things are looking good for Drunken Boy, but he's got to be careful because, you know, uh, as much as he won that last game, there was moments there, like like when that mass roach baiting attack was coming in there, when he had to abandon his third base. Like those moments, it was it was very dangerous. And yeah. if a couple banings got better connections, that's all it could have taken for that game to turn around. So, yep. uh, I mean, it, but that's that's often how it is. Uh, TVZ is so often on a razor's edge. With can the Hellbats get the great hits off? Can the Widow Mines get the great hits off? Can the banings get the great hits off? And it's just it's such a thin margin of error as far as the micro goes from both players at this super fast pacing exciting matchup. You know, the early game was was fairly interesting as far as Ian making those nine rushes. And then he put like three in each, each mineral line. So he was expecting some sort of drop play, which is which is natural to expect, especially from a player like Drunken Boy. And then Drunken Boy just turned it into a, a frontal attack, which actually, as a guy who's been playing Zerg recently, terrifies me if Terran players start doing that more. Because you're thinking it's a drop, so you're investing these resources into these early nine wrenches. And then, obviously, those aren't drones, so is your economy really going to be in a state where you know, you're facing a push that even has a siege tank? Like, ha like dealing with that efficiently might be a little bit tricky. And it was, it was. tricky for Ian in that. It was. You know, I, I don't... He did take a lot of damage to that. And it's hard to tell. The third of the Terran is delayed when, when they do that build, so you can take some damage. Sure. But I think it would have been much cleaner. When he saw moving across the map, um... He, he, he baited, I think it was like 14 or 20 speed beams. And I think roaches so, would have roaches. been a yeah, better way to defend that. Now, part of that is he was, he was investing a lot of the gas into the 1-1, one, one, but... He was. But it's like, he should he should still have enough gas. Yeah, for, roaches are pretty, pretty yeah. cheap. I mean, it, maybe you have to cancel one of those upgrades and restart it. Yeah. Oh, it's better than, I mean, what happened is the upgrade got canceled <laughs> sure. when it was further along, yeah. What, uh, anyway. What, what were the engineering bait timings from before that game? Because I'm trying to remember... Oh, uh, they, they, uh, they were fast. They actually got them okay. before the third season. So, so it's kind of one of those things where you don't necessarily want to delay those upgrades because then you're setting up to set yourself. It's so true. It's, it's very interesting to think about. But uh, we got a Reaper trying to be annoying. A, a lot, lot of, of slow links. There. Yeah, I think he built eight. That's. I, a, I see a couple dead bodies, and he has... Uh, or did he build ten? How many does he have he on the field? He has seven links on the field. He lost, he's only lost one unit. So oh, okay, so he only lost he, one. He built eight. Yep, so he did build eight. That's more than normal. Um, Maybe if you're, sometimes you're a little nervous, you accidentally hit that, that, yeah. that Z button an extra time. Oh, it's a Reaper Trap! Oh, he's dead. Uh, he, he just gave up. He gave up on life. He might have tried to swing around and escape, but, you know, sometimes you just get tired. Yeah. Though, 
You want to keep that Reaper alive, that's pretty important. Yeah. Another tank, uh, another tank opening type play. It's kind of cool. I, I'm, I'm still... Because obviously it's nice getting the Hellions out as, as fast as possible to start taking the map control back once speed is on the, on, on the map. I wonder if this is uh, a reaction effect that so many Zerg players are, are doing uh, a Roach-focused early game. Yeah. Like, if, if you're watching like the current style of Zerg play, uh, even even at the, the very top level in Korea, it, it's, it's very similar in, in ZBT, is that even if they want to go to speed dean, speed baiting, mutilisk, you know, in, in the mid game, they often open with about seven or eight Roaches just so they can deal with drops, so they can deal with early, early wood of mine pushes and, and things like that much easier. Uh, because if you don't have the Roaches and your opponent goes help at drops, it's... <laughs> Pretty rough. Yeah. Um, Got a queen, spark crawlers. So yeah, this, this, this is how Drunk Boy covers his bases. He gets a tank so he's fine against roaches, and then he goes for hellbats. Um, and so if there's not roaches, yes, maybe the early tank isn't as super important, but uh, you know you've got hellbats anyway, so they're happy there's no roaches. And he got the overlord again. Did he really? Oh yeah. Yeah. And what's nice is when you kill the Overlord, you can put a tank how he hey, put one here. Um, it's one of these commands to put a tank right on the ledge. If there's an Overlord to give vision, the Roaches can kind of walk up underneath it and, and snipe it. Sure. But without that Overlord there, that's not really an option. Um, I mean, he's not he's not going for like a Roach push anyway, so. He's not, he didn't have a Roach Warren. No. Which is actually, I mean, he got that layer pretty darn fast. Because uh, he got the layer even before the Evo Chamber's right. Generally, you're going to start the Evo Chamber start at the 1-1, one, one, and then your layer kind of coordinates very well with getting 2-2. Two, two. But in this case, skipping the Roach Warren, going straight to Lair before the Evo Chambers. And I think he's going to be facing the exact same timing we saw last the game. Spire. I kind of like this, but it, there's a timing, obviously, yeah. here, where the, where the Hellbat drops can happen before the Mutas get out. I, it's not even. I don't, it's not going to be a drop. I think it's just going to be the same frontal attack oh. we saw last game. Um, given the fact that the Starport's kind of late. If he was going to drop, it would have been done by now. Because um, you, you can start it around the time you start the Armory, right? Uh, like going straight for the Hellbats, this looks very similar to last game. And there's no reactor on a Starport either. So he's remember. Just, Oh, he's going to see it. It was the one medevac, four hellbat, one tank, and yeah. like eight or ten marine yes. attack. Uh, and it hits, it still finishes right as he hits the front. This is the exact same ability to win this game. Uh, he has two hellings mixed in there as well, uh, which I don't remember if he had those last game or not. Uh, but they're not going to play the biggest role. Sure. Uh, one thing the hellings will do is they can poke ahead and see what the Zerg has. And if the Zerg has overall number of units, you might put it back away. Now, this is going to hit right before he meet his pop. And, and Ian has got to recognize this is coming, and he's got to make a ton of banings. Uh, because if he can't eradicate those hellbats with the banings, the speedings are not going to uh, have a fun time dealing with this. Nice to decide, does he save gas from mutas, or does he invest in banings? And he's, 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 it looks like he's saving all of his gas. Oh. Well, he's supply blocked. You can still make banings. Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah, of course. So, so, so since he's supply blocked, not making the mutas, right? And, and instead make the banings kind of a thing, since you, you don't need the supply. And I think, I don't, mutas are not going to... Yeah. Like, even if you eventually clean that up, if you can deal with the Marines somehow else, so you, you'd lose your third base trying to go this. Also uh, placing Spores in his middle line, so still playing really safe, even though he sees his frontal attack coming. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think he was, uh, just uh, make sure Hellbat drops aren't, aren't gonna happen. Yeah. Really cool position on this tank, and now the Marines and Hellbats coming to this third butt. He's kind of in a pit. Hellbats and drop by the tank. Oh, sick. that would be sick. But the Ling's gonna target down that tank. The oh. Banelings come for trying to target down the Banelings with the Siege tank, and these Banelings are gonna get some decent connections. Yeah, all the Marines, there's only two Marines left. And this is where you want the Mutas. It is, it is. With, with the oh. way... Oh. 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 You know, uh, I was... He, oh. I was surprised he picked the Marines up in the meta back. Um, and his Banelings came in. But either way, Ian's gonna deal with this just fine. Uh, he didn't lose any drones. Oh! oh. Okay, he did do some drones. Yeah, Hellbat drop in the main. As that was all going on, I think the medevac was either... Uh, it didn't it's, sneak it's away. It's at the top, yeah. I okay, it's, it's stuck away. Because there was a score caller there, which is nice. Wow, wow. Hellbat taking down a lot of links as well. So what's what's the worker uh, situation 53 here? to 47 in favor of Drunken Boy. Wow. Only 47 drones. That's a Zerg, you know, ideally. Yeah, he's investing a lot into holding off that. Yeah, and he, he tech Lair so fast. So, he, I mean, he wasn't going to be on a super high econ. This isn't, you know, some Zergs do like the mass upgraded Zergian style and then later get Mutas, and the Mutas come a little bit later. Um, Ian was trying to get them out very fast. I think he wanted to make sure these drops uh, can be shut down. Um, and that cost him some drones. Upgrades are about to be even because uh, there's no 2 2 on the way for Zerg, and 1 1's about to finish for Junker Boy. You see it? Oh, he sees it. Wow. Oh, now that's, that's a goner. That's a great spot. Yeah. 
and this meter is coming back to reinforce. And, you know, Drunker Boy, his third still isn't set up yet. Uh, I, I assume he has a third command set. Um, but it's not set up yet. So, losing these units, each medevac, is, is a valuable asset there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, the story, one of the storylines of last game was keeping those medevacs alive throughout the game. But Ian going for the very fast meters to try to keep that from happening. Also, 2-2 two -two started right away. And look at the upgrade timings here, Mr. Nick, compared to last game. Very even. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a very, very close game here. And, and it's going to be a very different game. Ian's not going for the mass roach, you know, bending, overwhelm his opponent style. Uh, he's going for the Mulus. He's going to have the map control in, in the short term for the Mulus. Look, three oh. missile turrets. Wow, those guys aren't going anywhere. Oh, Mulus actually committing themselves oh, to the middle. There's geez. a lot of Marines there. They're he's... cornered, are they? Gosh. What's in it? I don't know why he committed himself to this location. The Mutas are not happy with their commanding officer, that's for sure. No, I mean, I, I think he, he thought, he saw the army was in the third, so he thought the main would be vulnerable. Uh, but even a few Marines is enough to really uh, make Mutas trap back here. Like, how many oh, are no, they they're going to have to run the three turrets here. They, they can't. They're all done. They've got to head off. And, and now there's some more Marines there. Oh. Now they got to head down. Okay, they found an escape path. Jeez. But uh, uh, many casualties. There. That was not a fun uh, <laughs> I think that's one of those track. decisions you immediately regret. When you go to the main, there's like three turrets hitting you. Yeah. Imagine it being so. like the, the, the Muta pilot. You're like, it's like, bogey to the right. He yeah. go left. Oh, no, there's guys <laughs> over there, too. Guys, we're trapped. We you're must like, find a way out. We can do it together. Everywhere you look, and then your buddies are dropping down left and right side we of you. We can make it. It's like in uh, Star Trek when Anakin was, yes. was <laughs> shooting the missile at the Death Star. And made it through that little hole. You didn't, you didn't and there, there, there are pilots yeah. everywhere. <laughs> there are, everyone watching is like, there's like a mix of people who are like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I need to stop trolling. <laughs> I just had to do it. I'm sorry. All right, Muta's trying to harass, but plenty of turrets there to defend. There's a big attack going in by Drunken Boy. And unlike last time, uh, in these battles, everything is very uh, uh, replaceable. Hellbats and Marines, except for the Medivacs. But there's Mutus, so the Medivacs could potentially be taking on the battle. Drunken Boy's got, got to be a little bit more careful with the army than he was when he fought against the, the Roach Banyan Force. And he's going to back away. He's, he's respecting uh, the, the creep. And the fact is, when engage Banyan's on creep, Mutus trying to shark around here to the far right. Trying to find uh, spots of vulnerability. Target yeah. down the turret. The SCV is definitely going to try to break that goes down. The SCV. Some SCV is going down here. Yeah, a good amount. Whoa, there's only one turret. Okay, so Marine's going to be stimming back to deal with this. Now, 3-3 is on the way here for uh, for Drunken Boy. Are and you, there's, no okay, there's, okay, there's no Okay, there's no hide yet, though. So he as knows, far as 3 3 oh, go ahead. Sorry, as is, he knows the mutants are our, our way, so we can go ahead and clear up some creep. Yep. But I wouldn't expect him to push in too far because uh, there's, the creep is still there. Oh, he's beware. actually he might get himself stuck if he goes to the side base. Production. He does not speed on the Banelings. He's got to be so careful because it, this is this is a trap, man. There, there's no way out from here for Terran. Here come the Banelings. Ian going, but he's trying to clean up this army. The Mutas attacking from above. Their goal is to take down the Medivacs, any ground units that can't shoot up. And the Banelings cleaning up down below. The Medivacs are going to try to sprint out of there, but the Mutas in a hot pursuit. But as long as he keeps... Oh, you got to keep the Mutas alive. Or got to keep the Medivacs alive. Are they all going to die? I think they used that to burn during the battle, I believe, so... Oh, one of them. One of them is going to escape. Oh, the, oh, the Mutas! Oh my oh. gosh! He just oh. lost all of them. So, oh it was God. a double trap. Okay. First, Terran got trapped, cornered his army okay. to the left, and the, and the, by the third of Zerg. A lot of Banelings there. And then the Mutas got lured. Right in that grass. Okay, Banelings gonna run. Um, he still he still hasn't started his hive, which is a little bit concerning for me. I, I, once three, I three, feel he doesn't have the economy right now. Yeah, well, so, like, how does he deal with 3-3? Three, three? His fourth just got up, so now we can start going He hide. also did... He did kill all the all the all the medevac. Yes, but you know, Drunker Boy's ahead. Of uh, and this has just been, you know, the, the three base Terran is better than the three base Zerg because he mules. And, and the fourth of Zerg is just now being saturated. But there's a drop here trying to disrupt it. This is a stressful timing here. Uh, we see Ian dropping here in the fourth base, or uh, Drunker Boy dropping in the fourth base there. Ian, the Bayless is turning back, but the main army gonna be oh. coming forward. And, and, and while, while he's distracted with this drop in the main. And, and the creep's not spread as far as it was before because yeah. he got rid of the creep tumors in the last attack. Get rid of some more creep tumors here. All the Zerg is in a natural. Here come the Banelings. He has to get very solid connections. The Marine's going to be sprinting away. The Banelings trying to get those uh, detonations in. It gets, oh, gets some good ones. That was actually not terrible for Ian. And he's no. going to clean up the majority of this a, army. A very efficient engagement there. The, the Marines uh, weren't 
quite splitting up as much as needs to be. The Mutas finish off the Hellbats. Wow. And, and now there's a 30 supply lead for uh, for Ian. He's got his fourth totally saturated. Wow. His drone count's looking amazing. If Drunken Boy splitting was a little bit better, if he like, kited away, backed up, and split up those units, that this could be a much different game right now. Ian doing a great job getting those solid Valen hits. Drunken Boy trying to equalize base count on four. Okay, Spreading some mules and... Oh, that's an annoying Zerg game. Oh. And now the mules are actually going to go the wrong way. He's got to manually control those those, uh, those mules back to the command center. They're taking the... Yep, there you go. Take the long trip. These mutas are very bold. These mutas have been so bold throughout this he's game. He's lost a lot of mutas this yeah. game. Um, I think he's probably built like 30 or something. Oh, uh, I, yeah, I agree. And there was the one time in the main where they got trapped. And yep. There was the other time where he went after the medevacs. Yep. Uh, and there's not enough to take on a turret. Six mutas, uh, which is no repair will mention muta turret, but lose two mutas trying to do so. And that's, that's not... Worth it, yeah, I mean, it's really interesting because they're units you want to scale up as game goes along, like like a medevac, any any gas intensive unit. Yeah. It's very important to keep those guys alive. Just kind of magic numbers in mutas. It's like uh, the difference between having like four mutas and, and seven is actually not that big. Um, but once you have enough, like twelve, you can start. You can, you can take on a turret. You can focus on medevacs quickly. Uh, that's where you want to be at. Or some people go crazy and go even more. Uh, oh, off creep. Widow mines. Widow mines this time. And, and there haven't been any yet the entire game. Which blows my mind. So, so, and it also means it might be more effective because Ian won't be anticipating him, right? He's been, oh, but he sees, did he see him? Yeah, he Burrow. sees him. Mutas now. Burrow. Oh, no, Mutas really want, uh, yeah, they have to, <laughs> those Marines would have just, yeah. the Marines are 3-3 three, three right now. Yes. And the Zerg's only 2-2, two, two, just now starting 3-3. Three, three. Uh, he's going to try to transition to Ultras, uh, but right now, you know, he's just focusing on, on, um, the speeding baiting, he, his next max uh, is going to be an Ultratus. Taking the, the fifth base. I, he need, I feel like he really needs to reprioritize the creep right now. It w would be nice to have some uh, some creep out there. Right. Let's see how he can handle this engagement. Both these players are maxed. Deciding engagement might be on oh, the way. So is, many does, Marines marching forward. His army could, could come in from behind, and Joker Boy is, is expecting to come in from a oh. natural. Oh, no. He's Whoa. cut out three enforcements. Or, or, is he? He uh, just ran. He's actually getting... He just ran a bunch of Bailings into yeah. Hellbats and Marauders. He lost a lot of units there. Uh, but this counterattack is, is actually... Wait, I, oh, Morgan is this. trapped there. This is a... This is a I a, think this is a disastrous for Ian. slaughtered here. Ian hasn't gotten much damage done all right. at all. Okay. Now he can do some damage into the natural uh, with, with Mutas and some speedies into the main with more units. Uh, the natural is going to be saved. A lot of SCVs were dead. Uh, the main is being uh, damaged some. 86 links in production. Ian still has a lot of resources, so I guess in a sense buying time, but if we consider... You know what's actually crazy? Yeah. Look at the Terran army. Yeah, it, it hasn't it hasn't been And, and, and they're all almost dead. Oh, yeah. It's dimming. <laughs> there are so many hurt guys. Now the medevacs come back, but they're also low in energy. Um, he's trying to recover here. So Ian just trying to spread Drunken Boy out as fast as possible, or as much as possible, I guess. Really trying to test his multitasking while buying time back home to get 3-3 yeah. out, while getting Ultras out. Uh, yeah, I thought it would go Ultras, but he's actually spending all this gas on Mutilus. 14 more Mutilus oh. in production. Uh, Banings as well. He's going to have 3-3 three, three for next... Ooh, those Winnow Mines. That's scary. Overseer's going to spot those. Yeah. Okay. A few more Zergings throw away their lives. Yep. And now they can kill him. Oh, he's taking out a few Banings as well. All right. So here comes the big push from Drunken Boy. He's going to try to make it happen right now. But 3-3 three, three is done. There's so many Marines. And not a lot of Banelings. Banelings could be huge. Splitting has to be perfect here from Drunken Boy. Oh, that one Hellbat just got some big hits up on the Banelings. Remember, Hellbats will two-shot Banelings, so it's very difficult to run past Hellbats with Banelings. Huge Marine squad here from Drunken Boy charging into his opponent's natural expansion. Another counter here. Ian sprinting his opponent's natural expansion into his opponent's main, at least trying to scan going down, trying to identify exactly what's going on. What's to stop this massive Marine force? Not a lot of Banelings on the field. This might be, I feel like I would favor Drunken Boy in this situation. A bit of a base trade, but Terran buildings can lift. There are a lot of mutas out in the field, though, so if the Terran buildings oh, the mutas will tear them up. The production is all being camped right now, so another player can really produce. Well, Drunken Boy can't produce the units. Ian can still, if he can get enough supply, he can still uh, produce from his external hatcheries, at least until his tech bonus will be taken out. Yeah, trying to take out the Spire, the Bailing Nest, and his Roach War in there. The Hive would be great to get as well. Kind of uh, splitting up his units a little bit. you got to always be aware of potential Bailing swooping in here, but... I mean, Drunken Boy's losing everything. He and, is, and, and if the orbitals all go down, all of a sudden he's revealed, he has no detection. Okay. One thing Zerg can do to the situation, if they kill the orbitals, 
throw Banings with a send a game. Oh, that's a great point. Because it's all Marines, right? You get a couple big hits on that and... Is he a on the way? No. Oh, well, he just lost his hive. Uh, so th there's only one base left for Terran, and it's this planetary over here in the far right. And it's it's actually not going to be left for very long. Oh, gosh. Okay, so running out of buildings here for Drunken Boy. There's only one building left, I think. That, that command center is flying to the north. Is that the only building? Can you confirm that, or can we confirm that? I think I think that's confirmed. Yeah, that might be the only building. Okay, yeah, so what he, needs to happen He's got to babysit here, this command center. Yeah, he's got to keep those Marines close but to What that means is how can he protect the command center and deny this left side base from Ian? Bring the command center with you? Yeah, I think he has to. Uh, but it, if he lands it, how's he going to... I mean, he's at 134 well, supply out of 11. Keep some units back home to defend it, right? Yeah, I mean, if he splits his army in half, and he, he, he has to hope that half his army can beat the full army of Ian. I think he has to bring it with him and go for that third base. Like, I, I don't see what Lanny is going to do. He doesn't have any SCVs. So he, he can't actually build anything. Yeah, it, it wouldn't serve any He purposes. can't even turn into an orbital. He doesn't have a barracks. So. All right. He actually can't do anything with it. He's still keeping it in his back. So this is half his army coming yeah. forward. Oh, he should just bring everything, bring it with him. He's leaving the command His right army's back. very scary, though. All right. Yeah, it's heading towards his opponent's yeah. third and base. He's not going to try to defend it, which is smart. Um, Ian, Ian should be going for Burrow. Uh, oh, the medivac's getting taken out. That's actually so important. Oh, yeah, because every stem is really going to burn him. So and you know what? I think Ian sees the size oh. of his army. Does Ian think he can take away this this uh, army on the, on the top right? He might go for the command center. He sees the command center. He has a lot of speed needs, oh, and there's no. no help ass with this army. Okay, Drunken Boy's oh, no, freaking sorry, out. There's, there's four. That's enough. Drunken Boy's Okay. Yeah. As long as he positions correctly. Stipping again, every stem is so important. I mean, with the four help ass, the speed needs can't even approach that army. Okay, so buildings remaining, nothing left in the middle left, but two hatchers you made on the middle right. Drunken Boy needs to identify that. Those are the I mean, two. How could Drunken Boy Scott? He has to send a right. medevac. He can't. Yeah. He is sending a medevac go with very low HP. Man, if he only had some uh, some more banings right now. If he had a baning nest with his money, he could turn his army to banings, and I think he yeah, I think he wins. Okay. So I, these are banings. I think he wins. So but as it stands, though. As it stands. Two hatcheries versus one well, command center. If he can build a baning nest, he needs to stay alive. Long enough to build. I mean, because uh, Tyrion can't ever mine. Ever. Ever. Because he doesn't have an SCV, so he can't build a depot. He can't build a barracks to turn it into an orbital. Um, he actually can't do anything. So. Economically. He needs oh, a drop here at the bottom, but the mutas are, might pick this off. Oh, they're tracking him down. Like every unit counts. It, yeah, it's dead. I mean, once it, once it runs out of uh, the afterburners. Now, can he take advantage by attacking somewhere else, knowing the mutas are at the bottom? Kind of thing. If he knows where the bases are, but I don't think he does. He's. And this army he has no know. medevacs with it. He should know now where the bases are, I think. Depending, uh, based on where his units are now, as far as yeah. Marines and every single And given expansion. the fact that Zerg hasn't left yet. Exactly. Well, actually, Zerg could just have hidden... Ex no, there has to be a hatchery, else he would be revealed, right? Right. Um, so he knows there's a hatchery somewhere. Um, but the hatcheries don't even have to be at bases. Some people put hatcheries in a like, random spot. No medevacs here. He can't stem. There's two medevacs, but they're exposed. What if you just find them? Oh, there they are. Okay, no, they're meeting back up with the army. Ling's oh, the Zergs could get stuck oh, here. Oh, you don't want to trap yourself. No. Oh, they're attacking the Hellbats. They're attacking this army. This is, what is he doing? Ian losing half his army there. What is he oh, doing? Oh, no. That might be. That was huge. I mean, now he, yes, he doesn't have enough speedings. Even if he gets the Bane Nest up, I don't know if he has enough units left to, to, to make enough Bane to win. Okay, and he, now he knows exactly where these, these buildings are. Is there a drone anywhere else on the map? Hey, I, I'm sure he sent a drone out. That's, that's base racing one to one. You gotta hide the drone. I don't, I don't see one anywhere else. Okay, so, uh, what like, units tap? How many, okay, there's 18 drones. There's three in that Okay, base. now they're running. They're just now running. Okay. They, I think, are they gonna get out? I don't know. They're trying to run out. Terran's trying to cut not gonna them happen. Off. He's cutting them up. Whoa, oh, oh. Okay, so the drones get, the drones get by. He didn't want to use stem, his wife. He stemmed, he could have ran them down, but... Uh, he, he doesn't either. know if that's worth it, because there could be another hatchery and somewhere. And there's, he only has two medevacs. He has four medevacs with no energy. Oh, he got the bailing this done. Did he make, is he gonna make yes, bailing? Yes, he has a bunch of bailings in the middle of the map. Oh, sick. Oh, what? but the last hatchery goes down. He wasn't he did, able he to did, remake the hatchery. He got the drones out, but he yeah. didn't have time to build an extractor. Oh, yeah, he doesn't have the research. Because you know, he just made all the banelings. If, 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 but he had to re he could have built an extractor. Um, right, but to build a hatchery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all he needs is an extractor to win. Sure. Because literally, uh, well, how many units did he have at the end? Um, 40 banelings. Yeah, that's that's it. Well, I mean, if a drop can ninja over to the extractor. Yeah, then he, you, you he, he has to camp as extractor. It. He, it yeah. might be actually be a draw then. Because he'd have to camp his extractor, right? And, and as long as the mutas are there, he yeah. can't be too annoying with medevacs or lose them. Yeah, crazy game there. Um, <laughs> Ian losing his last hatchery, and that's going to be the end for him in WCS America. Huh. He's going to have to try to requalify. 
um, through uh, the Challenge League qualifier. So Drunken Boy is going to be advancing to the next match of the night. It's going to be the last match of the night. Drunken Boy versus Jadong to decide who's going to be the second person to advance from Group E into the Premier League of Season 2 WCS America. Coming up, guys. Stay tuned.